It's time once again for the Rural Intelligence Report with Mark Williams, ruralintelligence.com. As we like to say, the one stop to go to find out what's going on, what's been going on, and what is coming up in our area. And they've even got a great app for your smartphone, which makes it easier on your smartphone. Uh, Mark, uh, nice to speak to you again today. Good morning, Marshall. It's lovely to be back. And we're running into Halloween week. And my gosh, there are so many events. We're only I suspect we're only going to be able to touch on a few of them today when we talk. Um, But there are we're trying to list as many as possible in uh, rural intelligence. It's in the event section up and down the whole area. I mean, it's amazing. All right. Well, we will start off in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, on the 23rd of October, and that is Summerston and Priest Ranch Wine Dinner. Yeah, this, I and everyone who listens regularly knows that I absolutely love going to these wine dinners because you get, usually you get a great selection of wines at a very reasonable price, and you get dinner thrown in as well, and, and these dinners are really opulent and excellent, so you get to have two experiences for a reasonable price. And the, on Tuesday at the Red Line Inn, they've got this great Summerston and Priest Ranch wine dinner. And Craig Be- uh, Becker of Summerston and Priest Ranch will be actually leading a blind tasting. Um, and then it's all followed by a family style dinner. And just to put it in context, and I think this is absolutely amazing now they can do that. They are actually shipping in a lamb direct to Summerston Ranch that is going to be um, cooked for the dinner. And it's going to, so you could argue it's the ultimate in pasture and grape to table dinner. Um, and um, the Red Line Inn are getting their executive chef, Max Kipperman, involved in preparations for the whole thing. So it's really going to be a, a fun evening where you get to taste some really fantastic food and wines. I guess now uh, it is time to head off to the cemeteries. We'll go uh, to the Washington Green Cemetery (laughs) Tour on October the 26th. You can say that again. We've got one or two cemeteries featured today, I can tell you. Yeah, Friday, the weekend, the whole weekend is a cemetery weekend one way or another. But Friday kicks off down in Washington at the Gunn Historical Museum. Museum. And from 6.30 to 8.30, and I want you to remember those times, they are leading a whole series of tours of the Washington Green Cemeteries. Now, this is guaranteed to be a real horror tour and great fun as well. Um, and they they are hosted, they are, what makes it so lovely is that they are candlelit living history tours uh, of the town cemetery. Um, and they have costumed actors doing as, acting as your guides. Now, just be aware, though, the tickets will be distributed on a first come, first serve basis. Um, and that starts at 6.15. And these tours last an hour. They depart every 10 minutes or so from the museum. Um, but don't worry if you have to wait. So go along, sign up for the next tour, and then you have to wait there. But don't worry about waiting because the children, they're putting on all sorts of tremendous things. The children can enjoy refreshments. They're going to have the kids. Um, and there's a Halloween themed movie in the Wickham room of the library as, as well whilst you wait. Um, and so there's lots of things to do. You can take your phone and obviously the phone and nowadays all our phones have uh, flashlights on them. But if you want to be really professional about this, you can take a flashlight as well. And these are really fun tours with the costumed actors uh, leading them all. So it should be a great fun evening. As I said, oh, I'll, t- I'll remind people again. It starts at six. 30, but you can start signing up at 6.15 at the Gunn Historical Museum in Washington on Friday the 26th. And also on Friday the 26th in Millbrook, uh, you can go uh, to Reckoning with America's Environmental Crisis. Yeah, I, I had to put this on Friday as well because the Cary Institute does really have some fantastic lectures, um, and this is a much more serious issue, um, uh, and these, and this is where Cary really in, um, in Millbrook, and so at the, in Millbrook at the Cary Institute at seven o'clock on Friday the twenty sixth, they're having a talk um, from the ecologist and award winning journalist Jeremy Jackson, and he's just published a new book which is called Breakpoint: Reckoning with America's Environmental Crises. I mean, this is not just one crisis. He's talking about extreme weather events, uncontrolled fires. He's talking about there will be major forest fires over the next few years rising sea levels we all know about, droughts in certain areas as well. Um, and basically, he also talks about how agriculture is going to be 
players very, very badly indeed. And so he he will talk all about these issue, these series of it uh, of environmental issues. Um, but then on top of that, he does take time to go into some of the ways that communities can. Uh, try and uh, achieve a much greater environmental stability as well. So it's all at the Kerry Institute at, at seven o'clock on Friday the 26th. Um, and of course, you know, check out the details on ruralintelligence.com. We will head from Millbrook to Norfolk, Connecticut, on the 27th, the first annual Tour de Forest or Forest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I- I thought this sounded really great fun and um, just perfect for this forest. So that it's at the Great Mountain Forest in Norfolk, which is a 6,000 acre renewable forest. It's a really wonderful habitat for wildlife. It's a, they use it as a classroom uh, for training and education. So it's really good. And so it's a bike tour. They're calling it the Tour de Forest, as you as you pointed out, like the Tour de France. It's a bike ride uh, through the forest, but uh, there are stops all along the way, which will give you an opportunity as a, the cyclist to find out h- about historical facts and information about this uh, forest facility in the Norfolk area. Um, and by the way, I looked at it, I thought, oh, well, this is great. You'll be able to do a bit of cycling and lose a little bit of weight. But in fact, actually, it looks like they're going to do so many great things associated with it. So there's going to be uh, complimentary cider donuts and there's going to be cider and apples to eat as well so um, you won't lose too much weight anyway the ride starts at the Norfolk Curling Club as well where and you know how many towns in New England have curling clubs so it's amazing anyway um, all of the people participating are going to be offered refreshments and you get to see the curling club demonstrations before you head off uh, on your tour I don't think the tour is too exhausting by any means as well. And then at the end, towards the end of the day, you get back and there will be all sorts of drawings for prizes um, to cap, cap the, off the festivities. So, oh, and by the way, the great thing is the proceeds from this event will go to uh, support the sort of development of the Norfolk Rails to Trails uh, of, uh, Society, and, as well as obviously helping the forest's mission to uh, maintain and, and grow the forest and give lots of uh, educational sides to the forest as well. All so right. it's all uh, all in a very good faith. So, sorry. Right. We'll go from Norfolk. Sorry, I messed uh, that one up. Yeah, no, 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 you're fine with that. <laughs> okay. um, we'll move on now. Uh, Lenox, Massachusetts. Uh, And uh, it's the first annual, this should be fun, Halloween Dog Parade of the Mount. Yeah, I'm very tempted to go into this one, one, a big dog, and of course that fits with the Mount's um, background. Our dog is called Harper Lee, Um, so I'm tempted to take her along to the uh, Halloween Dog Parade, as you say, on Saturday, October the 27th at the Mount at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, It's uh, the... The thing that will put me off and going actually is that you're invited to dress your dog up in a wonderful costume uh, for the dog parade, but you're also invited to dress yourself up as well. And they're going to have all sorts of uh, of prizes awarded for the very uh, the various different categories, including best literary costume, cutest costume. That's pretty easy. Best handmade costume, and therefore for the for the owners as well as the puppies themselves best matching costume so a great fun event at the mount uh it starts at 11 o'clock in the morning on saturday the 27th okay we've got to have some compassion coming up here at the house of books yeah um this is a really interesting piece of information and research that's been done and i thought i'd i'd sort of look at it because not many we have well put it this way we have so many in this area and if you participate in these not-for-profit organizations this research may well be very interesting for you so in kent on saturday afternoon at two o'clock the house of books is uh, having the author christopher cook um, who's called the compassionate achiever how helping others fuels success and he will be reading from it and discussing and signing obviously copies of this and it's a sort of practical guide to cultivating compassion and apparently it's been scientifically proven that this is one foundations for personal achievement and success both 
obviously at home, but also at work as well. So if you are a compassionate person and involved in doing good works with other people, it actually really does help you in your own personal life as well. So it's super going to be talking about it. And you can buy a copy of his book at House of Books at two o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, the 27th. House of Books is the place to go. From Kent to Great Barrington on the 27th uh, towards a new reconstruction. Yeah, well, this is an important lecture, and it's the one uh, anniversary of the birth of W.E.B. Dubois, of course, in Great Barrington. And every year they put on, uh, well, actually, for the last 38 years, they've been putting on the annual Schumacher Lecture. Um, and this year they're going to be celebrating W.E.B. Dubois appropriately. Um, and the talk is going to be called Towards a New Reconstruction, Land, Racism and Economic Emancipation. It's, uh, the talk is going to be given by Lee Lair, uh, Penniman and Ed Whitfield. Um, and um, it's going to be at St. James's Place. Uh, it's worthwhile saying that the Schumacher Center for New Economics, which is um, really involved with this, uh, is the home of Burke Shares. So a lot of people will be familiar with some of the practical things they do, if not with the actual uh, Schumacher Center itself. So that's Saturday afternoon uh, on the 27th, 1 o'clock in the afternoon at St. James's Place. All right, let us head to, uh, on October 27th back to Hudson, New York, an author and talk and star, star watching party. Yes, this looks interesting. It's at the Churchtown Dairy, and I've never been to the Churchtown Dairy, so I think uh, it will be well. So starting at 7 o'clock in the evening, they're going to have an author talk um, followed by the star watching party. And the author is the photographer Barbara Bosworth, and she's going to be discussing the heavens. Um, it's her new work, which contains images of the moon, sun and sky. And they've been made over the last few years with an eight by 10 camera. Um, so it's the, really interesting. Anyway, following the talk, there's going to be a star watching party, and that's all led by the amateur telescope makers of boston so it sounds really unusual uh, you can click on the link on rural intelligence and get much more information about it it's saturday evening starting at seven o'clock in the evening at the churchtown dairy in hudson we're going from hudson new york uh and uh, well, look at this we're going to stay in hudson new york now what is, what does is courtney love and hudson new york have, have have in common yeah well, I don't know what they have in common, but uh, I'll tell you, Courtney Love is going to be in Hudson on uh, Saturday evening, starting at seven o'clock. And it's all uh, for the 2018 Pioneering, Pioneering People benefit. It's a benefit which they have the last um, several years at Basilica Hudson. Um, it's uh, There's going to be a private dinner if you want to participate. Um, do, do, do check that out. And then it's going to be followed. But I think much more interestingly, it's going to be followed by a public tribute to Courtney Love. She's uh, going to be participating in it. But there are a whole series of her friends, including Michael Streit, Natasha Lyonne, uh, Justin Vivian Bond, uh, Roddy Bottom, uh, Zia Anger, uh, or a whole series of other people as well. Um, and they are all going to be doing a big public tribute to Courtney Love um, at Basilica Hudson on Saturday evening. So it, it will be really interesting and be interesting to see Courtney Love there as well. So that do get your tickets in advance because I think it's going to be pretty popular one way or another. Starts at 7 o'clock on Saturday evening at Basilica Hudson. I love the name Roddy Bottom. All right, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we will move on. All right, now, and uh, it's uh, it's we're three for three in Hudson, New York. Yeah, it's a, it's the place to be on. Well, actually, there are so many places to be on uh, Saturday night that actually uh, I'm not going to say it's the place to be, but it's one place to be because also at Hudson Hall on Saturday evening at seven o'clock, the New York Polyphony uh, is going to be there, and it's part of the Leaf Peepers concert series. Uh, they're going to be hosting this New York Polyphony, and they're one of the foremost vocal chamber ensembles who are active in the U.S. today. Um, 
a big fan of theirs. They've really praised them for their musicianship and their vocal allure. Um, and basically, the, oh, and by the way, this group has earned uh, two Grammy nominations as well, partly because they have really moved er- early choral music much more into the classical me- mainstream sort of choral music it will be a wonderful evening at hudson hall starting at seven o'clock on that saturday evening as well all right to washington connecticut there is a costume soiree and art patrons at benefit there are a lot of costume soirees one way and another <laughs> uh, coming up this weekend uh, and let's we can start to go through them. So uh, in the town hall in Washington, um, the Washington Art Association and Gallery is celebrating their 2018 sculpture walk. And they're starting off with a costume soiree. And they are suggesting that you come um, as a uh, favorite sculptor. I'm not quite sure. Um, what my favorite sculptor would look like. Anyway, he could be living, they could be, or he could be, uh, they could have been passed away. But you can either come as dressed up as your favorite sculptor or as your favorite piece of sculpture, which I think would be great fun. Um, there's going to be lots of live music with the Swing Vipers. There are going to be cocktails, hors d'oeuvres. Um, and of course, by the way, there are going to be lots of big prizes for the best costumes. Um, so that's the uh, WAA Costumes Soiree. Um, to benefit the art patrons, um, uh, and that's going to be starting at seven o'clock in Washington Town Hall at, in uh, yeah Washington. All right, let's get rock steady then in uh, Miller to New York on the twenty seventh. Yeah, big party at Fall Farm. Um, uh, it's actually it's called the Fall Farm Party at Rock Steady Farm, um, and. Um, it's starting in the afternoon, but it goes on till late. It starts at three o'clock, but I think they're aiming it will finish between eleven and twelve at night. Um, and so, it, and it's a wonderful fundraiser. Um, so you go to Rocksteady Farm. Uh, they're going to be joined by the people from the Wild Seed Community Farm and the Watershed Center for a, for a big celebration of community. It's going to be celebrating food, land, and justice. Um, and the idea is you go along, you, you eat and drink, enjoy the music. You can even, by the way, if you go early in the afternoon, go on a hike. Um, and this whole event is important because it's going to be a big fundraiser to support uh, nutritious, free or low cost food for the neighbors in and around the militant area who can't afford nutritious food. So it's a big fundraiser and it's a good idea. Um, it's at the Rock Steady Farm in Millerton. It starts at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday the 27th. All right, let's head from Millerton, New York, to the Racebrook Lodge. Yeah, Racebrook Lodge in Sheffield always puts on these really unusual, great fun events. And uh, one on Saturday evening, starting at 7 o'clock, um, is uh, the group Barnstar. Um, and it really is an interesting uh, group because it, it was the brainchild of Zachariah Hickman, who was the bass player for Josh Ritter. He, and he, what he wanted to do was form a local bluegrass supergroup. Um, and to do this, and he's succeeded and he's done this by pulling together a whole series of Boston's really best musicians and songwriters. Um, and so uh, Barnstar is going to be at the Racebrook Lodge um, they are, uh, it, I, I think it's fair to say it's their own uh, style of bluegrass. They have amazing harmonized and this verb in their playing. They, they really have great fun. It will be a fun bluegrass evening uh, at Racebrook Lodge in Sheffield at uh, 7 o'clock, starting at 7 o'clock on the 27th. And our friends at the Wasaic Project are back at it again with their Haunted Mill and Monsters Ball. We love the Wasaic project and what they've done uh, in Wasaic is really fun. And, and they can turn the Maxon Mills into all sorts of things. And then you uh, then you can start to go into town as well later on. And I'll tell you about that. So it starts at three o'clock in the afternoon. And from three o'clock in the afternoon, at Mac, uh, the, you have a chance to take the family and particularly the younger kids into the kids haunted mill. And that's a bit of a toned down version of the um, the horrors to come, as it were, because uh, and, and by the way, on the deck of the mill, there's going to be all sorts of Halloween activities as well. Hay rides, costume contest, there's going to be face paint, snacks and carnival activities as well. But then at five o'clock in the evening, when the kids start to go home, um, the they really 
do start to put up uh, uh, some fantastic uh, events for the adults because you start to venture up. The, there are seven flights uh, up the Maxim Mill, and you and they have got together with about 14, I think, different artists and uh, uh, people to create the adults' haunted mill, um, and that's going to be great fun. And then at nine o'clock in the evening, the events move over to the Lantern across the street for the Monsters Ball. Um, and they promised there was going to be a whole series of macabre musicians there, devious DJs, creepy cocktails, and spooky spirits, um, and they will have a late evening fun event at the Lantern. So uh, the Wasaic Project really is going to be a fun place to be. And as I say, starts at 3 o'clock in the afternoon for the kids and then uh, for adults starting at 5 o'clock onwards. All right, from uh, that uh, that incredible thing at the we at the Wasaic Project, uh, we will move on to a masquerade Halloween costume party in North Adams. Yeah, all the way up to the Raylock Works, which is this amazing building, and, and it's being used so uh, imaginatively. Um, and um, it, uh, it's in North Adams, starts at 8 o'clock, and they are having a masquerade Halloween costume party. The idea is that you will be able to dance in disguise and then and compete for local prizes with all sorts of cre- creative, clever, and sexy costumes as well. Dare, dare I say it? Um, the music's by uh, the DJ BFG. Um, all sorts of other DJs are involved as well. Uh, so it was going to be a great fun party starting at eight o'clock uh, at the Greylock Works in North Adams. All right, we will then move on to another Halloween party. This in Egremont, Massachusetts. I tell you, there are so many Halloween parties You uh, all throughout the region. We really, you'll have to keep going back to the events section and rural intelligence to, to follow up on all. Egremont is, uh, is also going to have a fun party. It's, um, it's in the barn at the Egremont Village Inn. starts at 8 o'clock in the evening, and it's with the um, Apocalyptic Red. Um, and it's a big dance party. Uh, the band is really, uh, they play funk, do all sorts of disco covers and all sorts of original rock and roll uh, songs as well. Um, they've got a band in from Brooklyn to open the whole event that's called Naughty Clouds. Um, so you really will be able to dance the night away to funk, soul, disco, rock and roll, uh, all in costume. So uh, great fun there in the barn at Egremont Village in Egremont, uh, starting at 8 o'clock. Back to Hudson. Tales from Hudson's Crips. Yeah, moving to Sunday now. Sunday, October the 28th at 12 o'clock uh, uh, noon. Um, the, the, the the opportunity is to go down to the Cedar Park Cemetery, um, where they're putting on these uh, cemetery tours um, which are these have been going on for some time in Hudson, and um, they're all run by Kelly Dahushank, I think is how you pronounce uh, his name, um, and they are really popular. They've been called the Tales from Hudson's Crypts, the tour, and they cover the history of the cemetery, uh, some of the more recent discoveries. Um, they talk about how it's laid out and why it's laid out in a particular way. And they talk about specific histories of some of the most prominent people buried there. So, oh, and by the way, this year, there's a whole lot of new information which they're including in the tour. So if you've done it before, don't worry, there's a lot more new stuff that's coming in. Um, and of course, you at the finish of the tour, uh, there will be cider and um, cookies being provided as well. So that's on it starts at 12 o'clock at the Cedar Park Cemetery in Hudson on Sunday, the 28th. Williamstown, Massachusetts will be our next venture. Yeah, this is an amazing thing at Clark Art, actually. So one o'clock uh, Clark Art on Sunday afternoon, uh, they're holding M- Michael, Michael Pizarro's A Wave and Waves. And... Um, when I started reading about it, I thought this just sounds uh, really intriguing. They are bringing together over 100 performers, and they're mostly percussionists. So uh, they are bringing in the Williams Percussion Ensemble, the Talu John Percussion Ensemble, and a whole series of other guests. And um, people who go along to listen to this um, are s- seated amongst these 100 performers who are grid 
um, and they then uh, listen to it, it becomes an ocean of sound. Uh, there are all sorts of colossal sort of percussive waves are created um, by layers of almost imperceptibly soft sound. So they have people who are putting sandpaper on stone or seeds falling on glass and bowed bells and all sorts. So they all becomes a textural landscape. Um, and it sounds just absolutely amazing. So you become part of something in the landscape with sound uh, sort of surrounding you um, and, of course, the performers surrounding you. So it starts at one o'clock at Clark Art. It sounds a perfect location for this whole event. Uh, check out their website for full details. just sounds absolutely fantastic. And finally, we wrap it up with a concert uh, by the Aston Magnet Chamber Players. Yeah, if you want a lovely, relaxing afternoon, this sounds like the concert for you. St. James's Place, again, is the scene, uh, four o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Um, and it's, as you say, the Aston Magna chamber players are going to be playing all sorts of music, uh, sonatas by J.S. Bach, William Fried, uh, Wilhelm Friedman Bach, and others. Um, what's nice about this, that there is going to be a pre-concert talk with the Aston Magna artistic director, Daniel Stepner, um, at, which starts at three o'clock in the afternoon. So it's going to be a real Baroque concert for a lovely fall afternoon. Uh, as I say, it starts, it's in St. James's Place. You can go to the talk at three o'clock and the concerts at four o'clock um, on uh, Sunday afternoon. And that'll wrap up another busy week. Just some of the things you'll find at ruralintelligence.com. Mark, we'll speak to you next week. Lovely, Marshall. I look forward to it as ever.